All right. This video, I wanted to talk real quickly about um, a lot of you know that the uh, there uh, was a sinking of a South Korean ship off the uh, Korean Strait, and that's a developing story, right? Um, not all the details are known about that, so I'm not going to go into that. I made another video about it, but uh, this could be a, a major event. Uh, it's being downplayed heavily in the uh, Western media. Apparently, uh, Sarah Palin stumping for a uh, scumbag, anti-American piece of trash. John McCain in Arizona is more important than uh, 50 South Korean sailors missing in the uh, the Indian Ocean. So um, uh, they're de definitely downplaying that. Just keep an eye on that story. Uh, if uh, the uh, timing with uh, the signing of the START Treaty and the fact that North Korea uh, threatened, as they always do, right, to uh, preemptively launch a nuclear attack on South Korea and U.S. targets. Uh, the timing there is very interesting. And I definitely uh, encourage people to look a little further into that. Could be a major story. But in this video, I wanted to talk very quickly about uh, Israel, of course, right? And uh, some very disturbing developments I have noticed recently. Um, the good news is, is that the mainstream media, it's becoming more prevalent on... Uh, your uh, uh, more popular uh, Western news outlets instead of the alternative uh, information circuit, so to speak, right? Alternative news. And that, that's a good thing, but in a way, it's also, uh, in my mind, a ominous warning that uh, we could potentially be getting closer to that point. And this whole thing with Israel and uh, this diplomatic row, right? You know, uh, uh, Biden goes over for some kind of diplomatic meeting to Israel and they announced 1,600 new settlements in East Jerusalem, which they were going to do anyway, and they still are, by the way. And supposedly it was a slap in the face to Biden, Netanyahu's over here in the United States, and allegedly Obama snubbed him and, and ducked out to go to dinner and, uh, and embarrassed him and all that bullshit. War criminals embarrassing each other, right? That's believable. I feel the whole thing is a fucking bullshit, okay? It's a smokescreen for uh, darker issues that are going to become more and more prescient as time goes by. So I don't buy all that bullshit. It, it looks like a smokescreen to me. Um, so I wanted to cover very quickly uh, two articles I came across. And this one I came across the other day on Reuters.com. Link in the description, as usual. And uh, it has to do with um, the uh, idea, right? that Israel could use ballistic missiles against uh, Iran. Now, uh, the S-300 uh, anti, it's a defensive missile system that the Iranians have actually purchased from the Russians uh, will make a airstrike, right, a lot more difficult or impossible uh, once that system is all uh, integrated. Now, they haven't delivered on that yet, even though apparently it's been paid for, and some feel that there are political reasons for that as well, right, that it's taken so long. But um, the, the idea that once that system goes active, right, it puts Israel under the pressure that if there's going to be a possible preemptive strike on Iran, that they would have to do so before that missile system becomes fully operational. Uh, but apparently that uh, missile uh, system is so sophisticated, we're talking about the Russians here, right, that even a ballistic missile strike, um, it actually might be easier to destroy um, sedentary missiles you know, en route to their target than to uh, actually attack fighter jets. Who knows? So the idea that they're, they're talking about the, a ballistic missile launch as an option is, is really, it's not like it's a plan B. Either way, um, they, you know, there's dangers and there's pros and cons. Uh, for example, uh, an initial strike could be a complete failure and uh, then the retaliatory response on Israel, blah, blah, blah. But this article is on Reuters.com. And if you really read the article, it's real short. And it kind of it kind of plays with, okay, well, maybe Israel has the uh, option of using ballistic missiles instead of an airstrike, right? Say the uh, U.S. does not supply the uh, bunker buster bombs located at Diego Garcia. I'm sure there's some in the Middle East already. Let's not bullshit. Qatar, right? And, uh, but, and it's a really benign article, but once you actually read it, uh, I, I'm going to go down to the very bottom paragraph here, okay? 
the consultant who spoke to Reuters on a condition of anonymity, of course, played down the notion of ballistic missiles being used for conventional attacks. You look at any major Western military and you'll see that such strikes are purview to the manned warplanes, while ballistic missiles are reserved for nuclear strike scenarios. Okay? My point is that I get this, I get this ominous feeling that, that this article is really just trying to soften people up, right? Because most people don't read the whole fucking thing. We know that. Uh, to the idea that ballistic missiles could be used with nuclear weapons on them, right? That's uh, article number one. Article number two, I came across today, right? And this is what I'm talking about. This is on WashingtonPost.com, right? Israel could use tactical nukes on Iran. Think tank. Jerusalem, Reuters. Deeply concerned as it is by the risk of a nuclear-armed Iran, Israel has even hinted at using atomic weapons, nuclear weapons. This isn't 1950s duck-and-cover bullshit. Atomic is a nuclear weapon. To forestall the perceived threat. Perceived threat threat. But now a respected Washington think tank, respected by who exactly? Right? Isn't these these think tanks the ones that always get us in these fucking trouble? The Project for a New American Century, right? PNAC? War criminal scum? But now a respected Washington think tank has said that a low radioactive yield tactical nuclear warheads would be one way for Israel to destroy Iranian uranium enrichment plants in remote dug-in fortifications. Okay? So to be very clear, a nuclear weapon is a nuclear weapon. Period. And there is an argument that a underground nuclear detonation is actually more dangerous over time because of the interaction with the uh, the actual nuclear fallout uh, can cause all kinds of strange radiation in uh, naturally occurring minerals and metal in the soil. Okay? So it could, it could actually be more of a problem over instead of having the radiation blown out to India and Pakistan, and eventually the United States. So they're talking about it like, you know, low-yield nuclear weapons, maybe we could use those. No! Nuclear weapons are nuclear weapons. Period. Despite the 65-year-old taboo against carrying out, or for that matter, mooting, nuclear strikes, the Center for Strategic and International Studies, CSIS, says in a new report that some believe that nuclear weapons are the only weapons that can destroy targets deep underground or in tunnels. Okay? Think of the irony. Using nuclear weapons, right, a preemptive strike against a sovereign nation to stop them from maybe someday developing nuclear weapons. This is like a pre preemptive strike. All right? But other independent experts are on record warning that such a scenario is based on the myth of a clean atomic attack and would be too politically hazardous to justify. Well, forget about the political hazard. What about the fucking human hazard? What about all the people that are killed as a result? Right? Anyway, check out the articles. All right? Because I see this whole situation as, as kind of ominously a political theater when it comes to this dispute over uh, Israel and the United States, this rift, you know, this 35-year crisis in, in uh, relations, bullshit. Because behind the scenes, it's business as usual, and the voices are getting louder. Okay, they're slowly softening people to the idea of a preemptive nuclear strike on Iran. And this may be also be a political tool uh, to uh, use against the Russians, to uh, uh, give them a little bit of time in implementing that actual and in integrating and giving them all the components, Iran that is, uh, to string their S-300 missile system together. Um, so there, there are other aspects to it. But the more I look, the more the mainstream media, right, is starting to talk about these issues. And if that's not telling you that, that they're trying to soften people up to the idea that this, this is at least possible, right, even if it's a fake retaliation, for a false flag attack, say, in the Gulf of Yemen, right? Um, Gulf of Aden. Uh, there was a warning a couple days ago about uh, the possibility of a USS Cole attack going on, right? Our, our boogeyman, Osama bin Laden, was allegedly involved in that, in the, uh, the Gulf of Aden. Um, all respect to the dead, whoever did it. So anyway, very interesting developments. 
read the articles, tell me what you think, right? Because I just see this as an ominous sign and the potential for things to get ugly, okay? Uh, this whole thing, uh, this diplomatic row, this rift in relations between the U.S. and Israel, total smokescreen bullshit. All right, everybody knows that that uh, they're just going to build as many fucking settlements as they want anywhere they want, right? What difference would it be between announcing it, you know, when Biden's over there having some fucking roast beef or whatever he was eating, and any other day of the week? The whole thing looks contrived. It looks like fucking bullshit to me. Read the articles. Pay attention. Thanks for watching.